Today, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I'd like to let you hear, want to read again, or let you hear again the words of the gospel that we heard today. In particular, this one, this one section of the second gospel. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Here our Lord is clearly speaking of the holy apostles. But he could just as easily, and it is as easily, speaking of those who succeeded the holy apostles, the fathers of the ecumenical councils. For this gospel reading is read in their honor to acknowledge what they have done to preserve the truth, to defend the right teaching, the proper worship. And the fathers of the Seventh Ecumenical Council, for which we celebrate today, which we commemorate today, as you may or may not remember, they are the ones who defended the veneration of icons. On the center icon, it may not be visible, but on it is written the resurrection of the holy icons. And so these beloved fathers, holy men, defended this, this right practice against the iconoclasts, those who claim that we that the veneration of uh, renovation of icons is idol worship. And these dear fathers acknowledge that our veneration of icons, our veneration of the image of our Lord depicted on an icon, is a proclamation of his incarnation, is an affirmation of him coming down to earth to, to save us all, of God's dispensation, of his love for us. And we should we should pay close attention to the fact that this is the seventh ecumenical council. As we all know, the number seven is very special, it's very holy. It means completion or perfection. And our veneration, and if we did not have icons as part of our, as part of our worship, it would be incomplete. It would be imperfect. It would fail to acknowledge what it is that we believe. And if we have any doubts as to this veneration, that it is proper before our Lord, that it is God-pleasing, we have we have we can look no further. We don't need to look any further than the miraculous icon that came to our parish Friday evening. The Mershimi Ivran icon, Hawaiian Ivran icon, the Mother of God. The miracles, that, that miracle of this, the Mersh streaming forth should be given careful consideration for science cannot explain how this happens. The myrrh, the quantity of myrrh, should have long ago run the colors of the paper icon, because it's not even a painted icon, it's a copy, bound to wood. The paper should have lifted up off of the binding, off of the wood. The wood should have deteriorated long ago. And yet we know that the frame, the hewot of the icon, has to be replaced from time to time because it degrades, but the wood backing does not. And furthermore, 
for those who, under, who understand, who are scientifically minded, should realize that the myrrh has to come, we would think that the myrrh has to come from somewhere. The myrrh would have to come from the wood, let's say, the wood backing. But that has not changed. That has remained constant. Its density has not decreased. It is not thinned out. And so, how can this be except through the grace, the abounding grace of our Lord and honoring most, his most pure mother? So, dear brothers and sisters, let us take to heart that this is the proper, that this is the proper worship. This is the veneration of the holy icons, both of our Lord and of all the saints, for they are windows to heaven. They are by the means that we, our prayers, can touch, can truly reach out to the saints, reach out to our Lord. And for us, let it be a reminder that we need to be also living icons. To all those in the world, we need to be proclaiming our faith, the truth, to others. Not just our words, but our actions, the lives that we lead. For our world is becoming more and more hostile to the truth to the worship of our Lord. And we, dear brothers and sisters, need to be defenders of that, as these holy men were defenders of the truth. Let us continue to fight the good fight and proclaim that our Lord Jesus Christ has indeed come into the world to save us. He is the Savior of all. And through the intercession of his most pure mother and all the saints, May we all be saved and come to his holy kingdom and, is, and to share that joy with others. Amen. The blessing of the Lord be appointed to his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages.